Hi, I'm Kimberly Washburn, Curator of Education at the Florence County Museum. Welcome to September's Family Day at Home. This month we're creating artworks all about wonderful watercolor paint. These artworks are inspired by our newest special exhibition titled Alice Smith, a Charleston Renaissance Artist. This exhibition is full of wonderful watercolor paintings and we hope that you'll stop by to see it. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be making a wax resist painting that's inspired by nature. So let's gather a few things from your family day at home kit. You're going to need your three colors of watercolor paint, your white crayon, your small paintbrush, your sponge, and your largest sheet of white paper. You're also going to need to gather a few things from around your home or your neighborhood. You're going to need some water from your home and from around your neighborhood, search for a few leaves. I found these in the museum's courtyard. These are leaves from a bald cypress tree. We also have a, some leaves from a fig tree and another tree that is in our museum courtyard. So we're going to start by creating a leaf rubbing using just our white crayon. Now the first step in creating a leaf rubbing is going to be to remove the paper from your crayon. And you're going to want to tear all of that paper off. Make sure all these paper scraps make it into the trash can and not on your floor. So I'm just gonna remove that paper so that the whole side of my crayon is exposed. That's gonna make it very easy to create a rubbing of these leaves. Now a leaf rubbing captures the texture and the shape of a leaf on a two-dimensional surface, like a paper. So let me show you how we do that. We're gonna take our first leaf and I'm gonna start by taking this stem off because it's kind of poking out and I don't think that that's gonna let me get a good rubbing. You could do this with scissors or you can just pinch it off. I just pinched it. I'm gonna lay my leaf on the table with the texture side up. The textured side of the leaf is usually the back side. So I don't want to, even though this is the front, this is not the side that I want to use to create my rubbing. I'm going to use the back. I'm gonna place my paper right on top of the leaf. I'm gonna grab my crayon and I'm gonna lay it on its side. And I'm just going to start rubbing the crayon on my paper all around where that leaf is. Now, usually you would do a rubbing with a crayon that's a different color than your paper, but in this particular activity, the white crayon on the white paper is going to create sort of a magical effect when we paint over the top of it. So I'm just rubbing all around my leaf, making sure I get all the texture. And it's pretty difficult to see it, but I can see that the texture is there. Okay, next I'm going to take my fig leaf and I'm going to put it in a different area than the leaf I just had. So I'm going to put it down here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing. I want to try to fill my paper up as best I can with rubbings of leaves or of different nature objects around your house. You could try a flower. If you find a flower that has petals that will lay flat, then that might be a wonderful thing to take a rubbing of. Okay, and I've got just a few more leaves with these little bald cypress leaves. I'm gonna sort of position them the way that I want them and go ahead and create a rubbing. Now it's perfectly okay if your leaves overlap each other. They don't have to, oops, my crayon broke, that's okay. I can still get a great rubbing. Your leaves can overlap each other. They do not have to be in an area all on their own. In fact, it might be interesting to see how they overlap. All right, so I've got rubbings of all of my leaves on my paper, and now I'm ready to add color. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can do that. If you want to add a large area of color very quickly, you can use something like a sponge. 
Now I've gone ahead and wet my sponge with water so that it's nice and soft. And I've also already added water to my watercolor paints. If you have not already added watercolor or water to your watercolor paints, you're going to want to add just a little bit of water, probably about halfway full on your cup so that we have plenty of water in those paints. Now I'm gonna just dip my sponge in the paint and then I'm gonna start spreading that paint over the surface of my paper. And you can see that anywhere that I have used my crayon, that watercolor paint will not stick. And it helps bring out the beautiful rubbings. They almost magically appear, those beautiful rubbings. Now, I just used my sponge to spread blue paint all over my paper. But I could also come back in and add some other colors with my paintbrush, just to do a little bit of color mixing and add some interest. This is also a great time to practice color mixing and experiment with how you can mix colors together to create new colors. I'm gonna add a little bit of red over here. Blue and red make purple. I didn't mean to get more blue, I meant to get red. So you're just gonna keep adding watercolor paint to your paper until you're happy with your composition. Using a crayon to create a resist with watercolor paint is a wonderful technique that's easy to use. You could try the same technique with different colors of crayons, not just white crayons on white paper, but maybe a red crayon with, um, with blue paint on top or try a very bright crayon like yellow with a darker color of paint and see what effects you get. We hope you enjoy experimenting with wax resist and watercolor.